So shalom everybody. <clears throat> shalom everybody. Today we'll talk about the exact poster and uh, different details uh, according to the Ashkenazi and Sephardi custom because there's so many different details that were added. Uh, I think the most recent one was the Mishnah Bura, which was written about 100 years ago. So that's where the last detail uh, was added about uh, changing our face uh, slightly to the left or to the right, depending on which arm we're we're leaning on, and we'll get to that. But just wanted to show you the different art that that people did over the centuries of, of different people mentioned in the Bible, um, in such positions. Um, and can you see now? Oh no. Okay, so we have to go back to sharing screen. Um, so this is how. Uh, Chabad.org and others uh, actually took pictures of people uh, during davening um, and, and this is the Lubavitcher Rebbe so you can see very clearly he, that his arm is covered with the, his sleeve and uh, it doesn't look like he's looking slightly to the right or to the left but he is leaning on his left arm so that would be Mincha that's why also he's not wearing tefillin uh, here's with tefillin I think this is Rev, uh, Chaim Kanievsky uh, these are just a bunch of men, and this is another picture from Chabadpedia. Uh, and here it looks very clearly like he's leaning on his right arm because he's uh, uh, he's wearing the tefillin, but he's also looking slightly to the left. Uh, so now we'll we'll actually learn the details in the Pnei Alacha the way he describes this exact uh, posture. So. As mentioned, according to the Ashkenazic Minag and of some Sephardim, the Filat Apayim is performed by lowering one's head and leaning it on the arm. In the opinion of the Shulchan Aruch, one always falls on his left arm. According to the Ramah, in the morning when one's tefillin is placed on his left arm, he falls on his right arm. And at Mincha, he falls on his left arm. This is the Ashkenazic custom. And of course, if somebody is a lefty um, and his tefillin are on his right arm, then in the morning, he also leans on the left arm. When falling on the left arm, we tilt our faces slightly to the right so as not to point them straight down to the floor because of the question about a stone that was used for idol worship. Similarly, when we fall on the right arm, we tilt our faces slightly to the left. We practice this just as it was practiced when people were accustomed to actually prostrating themselves on the ground. For in those times, they tilted their faces as a fence, uh, a gader, against the prohibition of prostrating oneself on a stone floor, and that is mentioned in the Mishnah Bura and Bura Chas, so specifically in the additional notes of the Mishnah Bura, he wrote, also wrote the Bura Chas. It is customary to cover one's face with clothing, and it is not sufficient to conceal one's head with his arm, since the arm and the face are one body, and the body cannot cover itself. Uh, we have the same rule, by the way, about uh, kippah. If you have to wear a kippah in order to um, make a blessing or in order to answer amen, uh, it is not sufficient to cover your head with your hand. Uh, you have to wear some kind of cloth uh, on your head uh, in order to, to do that. Uh, and the body cannot cover itself. The main purpose of this covering is for sake of modesty, like that of a person who hides his face from Hashem out of trepidation and shame. And uh, so even before Moshe Rabbeinu at the Sne, where he it says that he covered his faith, uh, it says also about Avraham when he prostrated himself in order to pray for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, he was also very humble and um, shameful. But And I think it also said something similar about Cain, but it's not in the words that we use today for Nefilat Apayim. One who is wearing short sleeves and has a handkerchief should put place it on his arm and place his face on it. However, if he does not have a handkerchief, he may fall on his bare arm, but not on his palm, since it is impossible to hide one's face with one's palm. It's not the right size. If there is a table there, he rests his arm and head on it, and the table is considered the main cover for his face. Nobody can see his face through the table, the, unless you have uh, x-ray vision. It is customary to perform the Fiat Apayim only in places where a Torah scroll is present, or even other printed Sifrei Kodesh, sacred texts, in a place on which, in which there are no sacred texts, the prayer is recited while sitting without falling on one's arm. And so let's say you're on a train or on a plane and you're saying Tachnon, and that is 
the most appropriate uh, example. Um, there's no Torah present, and there's probably other things that shouldn't be. Um, and when we say Sefer Kodesh, that's already an addition. But the first part of today's class was about the physical appearance of us and our body. And now we're talking about the actual place in which to say Nefer Tapaim. So in a place that there are um, that there are no sacred texts, the prayers recited while sitting without falling on one's arm. When the filata paim is performed in the rooms adjacent to the synagogue, which do not contain a Torah scroll or sac sacred books, uh, if it is possible to see the Aaron Kodesh, the Holy Ark, from there one falls on his face. However, when the Aaron Kodesh cannot be seen, the prayer is recited again while sitting. In Jerusalem, it is customary to perform the filata paim even in a place without sacred text, because of the sanctity of the city serves as a substitute for the text, and if you remember, we gave the example of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was in the middle of a desert in front of the burning bush, and obviously there was no uh, Ark or Sefer Torah because there was no such thing yet. So, um, so he did fall on his face, and uh, and that, um, and it said specifically about the ground that it was the Mat Kodesh, a holy ground. So that's why uh, he did it in that way, in a place, or at least that's how I understand it. In a place where it is impossible for someone to recite an Ephelatopine prayer while sitting, such as in a place without a chair, or in a place in which another person is praying the Amida directly behind him and he cannot go elsewhere, mm -hmm. he may stand. Uh, it is best in that situation that one leans against the wall in such a way that without it he would fall, so that his prayer is considered to be recited partially sitting and partially in position of an Ephelatopine. So uh, a lot of details, but to sum it up, uh, our body is supposed to be leaning forward on our arm, and uh, not the arm that is wearing the tefillin. The arm itself should be covered or put a cover between you and the arm. If there's no cover available oh. anywhere, uh, then you are allowed to uh, put your head on, on your arm and then on the table. And last but not least about uh, sitting or standing, um, when when we don't have Aron Kodesh or Sifre Kodesh in the room, then we do it sitting. Uh, and if you can't sit because of the place that you, like let's say that you're on a bus even and there's no chairs or or um, something like that, then uh, again, uh, you should try to lean on a wall. But of course, uh, if there isn't one, you should just say it's standing up, but concentrate uh, and say it properly. So we'll stop here.